I have to admit that I was cheating and I had uh, I have my tweetbot still on my iPhone, although I was <laughs> I'm back from the you know states for quite a while now. I have to remove it from there because it's just it's addictive. The sense of of being overwhelmed. Sorry about that. What is that? Jesus. Uh, it was my speaker. Okay. Bluetooth speaker. Jambox was talking to me because I ah. charged it and it was on. So it just wanted to say, hello, I'm charged. <laughs> Speakers talk to me right now. Uh, when I was recording the podcast for iMagazine, uh, my printer started cleaning itself. <laughs> like things get their own, you know, soul. Okay, checklist. Yeah. Uh, recording. Recording. And I am as well. Do you have to punch your microphone? No, no, no. It's already been pre-punched. <laughs> all right. Engage do not disturb on all devices and printers and Bluetooth speakers. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good one. Hello, I'm Radek. I'm Michael. And this is the podcast. A sounding board for interesting ideas and insights. We discuss books we read and want to share with you as well as technology and productivity, which is what we do by day working on our app, Nosby. Or whatever else comes to mind. All right, so first first of all, uh, apologies for a longer gap between episodes than, than usual. Um, this time, I was the one traveling and I just needed a, a break. Uh, but we get back to last week's, or last week and a half. Well, previous episode. Topic, which is... The, Previous episode, that's right. Previous episode's topic, which is the book, uh, The Guide to the Good Life, uh, which is about Stoicism. Yeah, by William B. Irvine. That's right. Uh, so if you haven't listened to the last episode, I highly recommend doing that because a lot of, you know, all of what we're discussing today builds on that. Um, but in short, we, we discussed um, what is Stoicism, what is what is its goal? What is tranquility? That it's a pursuit of this this um, calm joy of life, the the seeking of presence of positive emotions, absence of negative emotions. We discuss the the psychological tricks of stoicism. The big one, which is negative visualization and how to do it, and what it means, and what it gives you. We discussed uh, the mental model of trichotomy of control, and how to internalize your goals to be more compatible with the pursuit of tranquility. And we discussed um, how to deal with luxury, even the smallest amounts of luxury, so that it doesn't affect you in negative ways. And I think the next part is going to be how to deal with insults. Yeah, this is something um, uh, uh, it's really deep in my heart and deep on my mind uh, because it's something I I have trouble mastering. Um, the thing is that uh, people um, tends to insult you whether you write, like it or not. And uh, I read somewhere uh, in uh, the book by Stephen Covey that um, he, 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 he was always saying that responsibility, it's also responsibility. So to be, to be able to respond to things. So for example, if somebody insults you, you have to be, you know, you have to be ready and respond in a way that's, you know, that makes sense, that's good for you, that is conscious, uh, that, you know, that you control. And very often, our first response <laughs> is not the one um, uh, that we actually would like to do. Um, so, like somebody insults us, even you know, I'm driving a car. Somebody you know drives a car in a strange way, and then they shout at me, and then I shout them back, of course, because you know, why wouldn't I? Um, and and uh, in this book, uh, it's it's there's another approach to insults and how you how to deal with insults, and. Uh, it's something I, I would say that we have to really study and we have to really think deep and we have to really practice practice every day and try to um, try to see you know what kind of again tricks or, or ways help us control this because um, our I think our ability to respond to, to insults or not respond to insults or completely ignore insults and not take them inside and not to you know let them eat you alive from the inside 
it's really important because um, it's again it's um, the insults uh, they are somebody else's opinions and somebody else's you know problems uh, thrown at you and um, and uh, very often to criticize you or undermine you or I don't know something else and they are in a way for us to do our work to do our you know to do what we want to do to achieve what we want to achieve and if we um, if we lack the 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 current I mean the, the the practice of of dealing with the insults, then they will very often stay in our way and 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 just steer us off the path of our path and of our um, things, and uh, we will lose focus and we will um, you know uh, get angry, which is the next job topic a little bit later. But we will just um, yeah. So basically. Uh, uh, what I liked about this book is uh, is how how they are trying to help you to deal with insults. All right, so so that's interesting because I found the advice on dealing with insults um, good advice, but I, I guess I wasn't as as impressed with it as as you are, uh, simply because I I don't think I get insulted very very easily, so it's just not not as um, personally relevant, I guess, to me, or maybe I don't realize it is. Um, so how how would you describe the the stoic advice uh, dealing with insults? So there are a few ways to approach this. So uh, one of the first piece of advice they give you is that you should judge the insult by the person. So depending on who's the person, you should give the insult appropriate significance. <laughs> so for mm. example, um, if it's a person like who ha- who has no idea what you're doing then their insult should really no, not matter to you at, at all. So you should be able to just, you know, just sh- shake it off and just move on, which is easier said than done. Um, and and this is what, what, what actually um, what I'm trying to get in, uh, at here, that even though the advice is pretty solid, it's really hard to do it in practice. That's why you have to practice it. So uh, very often when somebody insults me, um, uh, uh, like, for example, I'm driving a car and there is like, different drivers so this is the, the best example I, I can I can have for that these insults are really insignificant <laughs> it's, it's it's really not important that somebody shouts at you when you're driving uh, uh, even if you're like even if, so if you're even making a mistake as a driver like but some and then somebody says shouts at you for, for that reason um would you know for that you should just totally ignore it and for for me this is the like this is the moment where I'm just thinking okay this person is frustrated obviously let them you know vent i don't care about that uh, i don't know this person i don't care about this, this person at all uh, let me just focus on my driving so uh, the, the way of the, you know this is a person i don't I, I don't appreciate let's say i don't know i don't care so maybe i made a mistake or not if i made a mistake i'm going to learn from this mistake i'm not going to drive like this ever again or try not to drive like this ever again but i their personal insult shouldn't you know affect me so this is the first thing. So to, just to try to um, uh, like to take the person out of the insult. On the other mm-hmm. hand, for example, what we get in Nosby, for example, we get lots of insults uh, for our software. Like you don't have it because you're not doing working customer support. <laughs> but people who are on customer support, they very very often insult uh, us in a way by saying, you know, this is the worst piece of software. This is the worst thing, and whatever. And Sometimes you we should you should just you know take a deep breath and avoid it. But sometimes their insult is because they care, they, but they have no other way to express it. So the, 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 their care for the product uh, is you know the, the, because they they want something to work, but it doesn't work. So they you know in the so our our job is to is to you know filter out um, the the the, um, the 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 constructive feedback part from um from the from the insult and focus on that and this is also what the what the book is, is saying that is if if a master like if, or a person superior to you in some kind of ability insults you in a way or just tells you that something is wrong or what you're doing is crap um it, you shouldn't again you should you should just you know filter out and just find out what the feedback is for and try to treat it as a, as a feedback but not as an insult insult yeah, I, I think that's a problem a lot of people have with insults, which I don't have, which is they consider feedback or critique as insults. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that just a serious problem that removes an ability to communicate honestly about uh, things you're you're not doing well, right? And and so we we see a lot of that, and we discussed that uh, on the show before how when we communicate in Nosby, um, you know, internally, like on on design fight. I mean, it literally, it's called a design fight because we we don't we don't try to make our communication more difficult by cloaking everything in uh, pleasantries because it's just not necessary. You you give critique or criticize where it's due and there is an understanding that it's not personal, that it's not an insult, that it's feedback. But a lot of people just don't understand it. They, they, they're, they don't internalize this. And when, when criticized, by someone, even someone they respect, instead of seeing it as useful feedback, as they should, they just see it as insult and get angry. Yeah, the problem here is as well that the fact, and we also discussed it when we talked about ego is the enemy, that very often our ego gets hurt. That's that's one thing. And second thing that very often people, because people who communicate to you, sometimes they lack the skill of telling you a constructive feedback thing what they they in because of their inability to do that what they do is they insult you like this is really bad and you're bad and you're stupid and blah 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 and this is really insulting so you're really i mean people are really insulting mm-hmm. you but when they say because you said this and that or like so if they expand on that you can understand okay so they have a problem with this and that so i have to improve this kind of part or maybe i i wasn't clear there or like you know very often unfortunately you have to really like understand the insult and just find the feedback thing that was there inside hidden and and not take the insult personally Mm -hmm. Uh, and speaking of of um the the source of of this insult um on the completely like different side sometimes you you might be insulted by someone you do not respect not not even someone who doesn't know what they're talking about but but someone um someone you know who's you don't respect at all and if, if they insult you like the, the 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 stoical um kind of solace to be found in that is well if if someone like like this approved of you now that that's something to be concerned about but if someone contemptible insults you it's kind of a a, a good thing right like you, you don't want people like that to actually you know, feel like you're on the same level as them. Yeah. Um, well, additional additional things that the, that the book was discussing is that to to be able to shrug off insults with a laughter or just silence. Mm-hmm. And um, I, for me, this is the, this is really difficult. I, as you know, I'm a talkative person, so for me, having silence is is awkward. For me, speaking slowly is already awkward, which yes. I'm trying to do on this podcast. I'm really trying. I really am. I know. Um, and and they're like the Stoics are saying that you should um, yeah respond with laughter. Just you know shrug it off when somebody insults you because a laugh like laugh or laughter um, takes people like uh, totally like off guard or silence, as in just look at them, just let the you know insult create its echo, and yeah. just don't do anything. So I don't know. It's um, for me these things. I mean, I'm I'm also kind of um, emotional, so it's hard for me to do these things. And, and and there's an additional part that very often, if I do like try to give it a quiet treatment, what it means is I, I internalize this. So I put it inside and analyze this inside, mm. and and this is not good. This is not healthy because then. Instead of this insult being meaningless, I give it additional meaning by overanalyzing this inside. So I'm not trying to display that I actually cared about the insult, but I take it in uh, within. So um, my one of my teachers in high school, just, she told me that um, you know, Michael, sometimes you just you know you should be punching something, man, because because you're taking too many things inside. You should take things outside as well. <laughs> uh, I mean, punching something, so some you know cushion or you know. <laughs> Like a, you know, I don't know, punching back or something, just to be able to throw things out, um, because um, uh, you know it's it's so it's hard. 
So what I'm saying is, that, you know, the advice that they give you, it's 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 a, it makes sense um, to laugh things off and or just give give it a quiet treatment. But um, I would say it's it's hard. It's too hard and requires lots of practice. Uh, and what I'm saying here also is that I'm trying to practice this, these things because, um, well, I have one treat. I have one uh, feature that many people don't have is the fact that I very quickly. I, I can distill the feedback part quite pretty quickly. So, uh, so the good thing to to occupy me is instead of analyzing the insult, I'm already analyzing my 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 like ways to improve something because of the feedback. So mm -hmm. I give attention to something else. So I, I like you know shift focus. So if somebody tells me you know Nosby is stupid and you did a stupid app because this and this doesn't work or whatever, I'm like okay this and this doesn't work. So what they want to do is this. So I'm I'm. You know, switching that yeah, yeah. to 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 constructive uh, criticism, even though I wasn't given one, given one uh, like really in my face. So, so you're kind of trying to occupy the rational part of of your mind by just like quickly switching from the emotional reaction of an insult to you know uh, do, doing the the uh, the rational conscious work of 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 figuring out what's what's useful there. Yeah, yeah. Totally. This, this, this is my like my best technique that I that I know that works for me. Yeah, that, that makes a, a lot of sense. Uh, and both the advice to either respond to insults with humor. So in, instead of making a, a counter insult, you, you you laugh it off, uh, kind of explicitly making a joke out, out of it, um, or not responding to it at all, like pretending it it never happened. It it makes sense. Like it's it's. It's a reaction that's better. It's a better insult than than a counter insult because it's it's humi it's humiliating to the the person insulting you that you were not touched by their insult, right? Uh, and it's it's easier emotionally for for you as the person insulted, right? And you you don't make it worse by uh, reacting to it kind of violently, and and that's the. Um, the the second part not 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 the humor but the uh, not not responding at all is is how I kind of naturally deal with insults like I I just move on as it as if it it never happened and it I guess it sometimes catches people off off guard like what I just what what did just happen like I, I just I didn't respond at all because you know it's like I don't care man like whatever and it's. Um, yeah, you, you you sometimes can can see that in in people's eyes that it, it's kind of humiliating how you you just you didn't care about their insult at all. There was a, f a movie with Whoopi Goldberg. I don't remember the title of the movie, but it was about about some fighting for human rights and um, you know black people and you know Ku Klux Klan and things like that. And uh, she said she said that it's not worth hating people uh, because if you hate someone. Either they don't care, or they don't even know about it. So, mm. so it's it's kind of this, what you're saying. Like when you when you like you know give them a silent treatment and you just move on, <laughs> you just show them that their you know hatred or you know whatever feeling they had for you are just totally like they don't matter. Yeah, there was one exception um, to to. to to this advice, which is when you're insulted by, um, you know, some, you know, a, a a child as a parent or a student as a teacher or some sort of subordinate, uh, or or maybe just someone kind of dumb enough not to understand that you've kind of humiliating humiliated them by not responding to to their their insult, um, and 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 so the the idea here is. Um, you don't want um, by your silent treatment to encourage someone to keep insulting you, right? So, in in this context, as you know, um, when you're dealing with your child or student, whatever, uh, you you don't necessarily want to shrug it off. You want to show them that. They, they don't want to keep doing that. But 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 the 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 distinction 
here is that you're you're not supposed to punish them for their for insulting you in the past. You want to um, kind of punish them to to teach them to stop insulting you in, in the future. So the point still stands that you're not to take it seriously, that you are to, to shrug it off. But in some context, your external reaction might be, you know, uh, different, um, depending on just who you're, you're dealing with. Oh, yes, because, you know, if this is a person that you want to have a longer relationship with, or you are having a longer relationship with, then you then then your long term thinking should be about this relationship, and if this insult stands in the way of the relationship, then you should you know do some measures to uh, for that to to never happen or correct the thing or or you know just as, as you said um, show that this is not how it's how it's supposed to be done. I've um, I've had this example here uh, very close. Uh, some neighbors uh, were. The, they have a small child and the child was insulting the parents. And for me, it was like, how can a child insult their parents? I mean, like, like, what do they do wrong? Because if I ever heard my daughter say these things to me, that this little girl was saying to their parents, whoa, <laughs> I wouldn't let that slide, uh, you know? And, and uh, I would really, uh, so that, that's why, you know, it's really important to, in these relationships, you know, to, to, to give feedback back and not let mm -hmm. this continue. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, one, uh, the, the next kind of small thing, like small kind of stoical pro tip, uh, is how to deal when experiencing negative thoughts, negative emotions, like when you're just kind of not, not feeling good, feeling sad for for whatever reason, like not uh, not not in direct relationship to say insults or 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 um, thinking of other things like like anger, grief, which were also discussed. But just as a as a general thing, you you might find yourself uh, feeling like right. And the pro tip is when experiencing negative thoughts, you change your outward appearance, so you. Kind of force yourself to think positive thoughts and force yourself to to smile, to to look as if you're actually having a good time. And and this is something that kind of sounds completely dumb, uh, but but this is something I I've actually um, saw discussed in in a book uh, long ago and and kind of looked up uh, and. And look, looked it up online, and there's there's a lot of research actually backing it. Like it's 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 a thing that sounds stupid, but actually works. Like when you're happy, you smile. You know, being happy, experiencing positive thoughts makes you smile. Make make makes you look as a person feeling good. But for whatever reason, um, the opposite is is also true. Like changing your outer appearance, kind of smiling. You know, just feel, like looking like a positive person makes you happier. Like the 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 kind of connection on a neurological level just works in both directions, which is weird, but it really does work. So you know, uh, this is I found it to be surprisingly useful because sometimes you're just not feeling great, and there's no good reason for it. Like, it's it's random, yeah. just random fluctuations in your in your mood that don't mean anything, that, that they're not in response to, to anything, that there isn't anything you can do about it. And sometimes you can, like, quickly fix it just like this, just changing your outer appearance and forcing yourself to. And, you know, five minutes later, you feel better. And again, it doesn't mean anything. It's just random fluctuations. No, I mean, uh, this is also one of the tricks that I use to get rid of the insults is sometimes, you know, again, coming back to the uh, the driving thing. I'm driving a car, something is happening and somebody is insulting me because of that. And very often what I would do is I would think, wow, 
this day is good. I'm just actually driving here, <laughs> my car. I love my car. I love my family. I have my family here in this car and uh, I have my daughters and they are so so great. And they, they just smiled before and they had this great idea. Like I'm starting, you know, to build up this story and I'm like, so with all this, does this random insult thing from a random stranger really make any, you know, is it is of any significance? If <laughs> if I'm here, you know, I am happy with my family driving a car that we like and, and having being a family that we, we enjoy each other's company. Like suddenly I'm, I'm smiling again, you know, because I'm 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 lucky. I'm happy. <laughs> and then by, you know, yeah. by deduction, coming back to this conclusion, I'm actually happy here. I'm, I'm good. This insult is is just has just totally lost significance at this moment. Like you know, bringing back to what's important, getting back to what's important, to what's essential, right? Bring back, to, like remembering what's really important. And my family is really important. Like our well being is really important. Some kind of random insult is not. And and this really you know very often helps me because it just this, it gives me an instant smile on my face. And this smile again you know as you said transmits back to being happier. And it works. Yeah. So speaking of dealing with anger, uh, the book had a lot to say about that. Oh yeah. Um, so first of all, um, again, uh, I, I I heard a quote. I think just uh, coincidentally, uh, like a few, I think uh, two weeks back or the one we were, we're back, by Brian Tracy saying that nobody makes you angry. Anger is a response that you choose to make. Mm-hmm. And um, I. I know he's right, <laughs> but it's hard. It's hard not to get angry or not to be made angry by somebody. Um, no, but, but 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 that's actually really interesting. I, I never thought of it, but but just the the language we we use, like it's it's a it's a phrase. You you say it like that, like someone made me angry. But it's not true. But it, it's it's not true. No. Like I, I never thought of it. That's that's actually quite quite an insight. Exactly. This is not true. Nobody can make you angry. Yeah. Anger is your, your, your response to somebody doing something. So, um, so that's why I, I, it, it's, 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 really, it's really cool. And, but what they are saying in the book, and I think they're really right, that anger should be avoided. Anger is not, uh, anger is bad by definition. Anger is bad. Even if mm-hmm. anger for a short term can motivate you to do something or can be like a spark to do something because some these they made me angry i'm gonna just do this and that and and you're on a path to do actually something good but this anger motivated you to 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 to, to start it it's you know it shouldn't be the fuel <laughs> uh to to continue because at some point you're gonna make wrong decisions because of the anger so so anger is just again bad by definition yeah and especially by definition um you'd use if you believe in the premise of stoicism like the whole premise is to remove yeah n- experiencing negative emotions from your life yeah and what they also say and it also struck me and then this is so right and this is so true that usually our anger is a reaction to something and usually it's stronger than what caused it so very often we overreact right to things again just what we just said because some insults or some things that happened to us that made us angry are insignificant and we give them mm-hmm. significance by 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 being angry so how how do you remove that significance like except for just being conscious of it and and trying not to get angry like what what, what are the, the the tricks of stoicism well <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My notes about anger are literally anger dot, and then I go on to another. No. Um, so again, I don't have here no, in my notes. Again, I don't have any easy solutions. All I gave you is this: the explication, the, the the information. You know why anger is bad, and then you know then then that anger shouldn't guide our decisions. Um, but how to deal with anger? So as 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 we said, uh, trying to shrug it off internally. Uh, like very similar uh, smile whatever do something else change the subject change the thing but also um, sometimes what i what i re- realized is you need some time so sometimes you it's okay mm. to feel angry for a while like you, because you know because this is we are human beings we're not robots and 
yeah, I th actually, I think the book was actually saying that that we should uh, give it a moment and 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 you know let the anger build up and then slowly go down. But we shouldn't relish on the anger. We shouldn't cherish the anger. We shouldn't multiply the anger. So we shouldn't really, mm -hmm. you know, as, as 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 I said, fuel it up. But we can let it be. And I I realized in many situations in my life when I when I got angry, so I got really angry. I knew it was bad. I knew it was wrong. I shouldn't be angry about this, but I was. So mm -hmm. the idea is to recognize it, to know it. So I know I shouldn't be rationally, rationally ang angry about that. I shouldn't be, but I am. So I should give it a, a time, give it a few minutes. Don't do stupid actions uh, based on that and just let it slide. And one of the, for me, for example, one of the, one of the ways to do it is to immediately try to respond. Like, for example, somebody writes me a, an angry email and I get angry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write them back and never send it. Just write them back. And this way, <laughs> I got it out of my system. It's, it's, out, it's out there. But I'm not going to send it because it's going to be wrong. It's going to just be multiplying this and it's going to be just hard. So I'm going to write them down right now uh, just to get, get it out. And then that's it. And then after a few moments or whatever, or maybe then later, I will write them a, a, a nice response like a, a day later or two days later when I've already you know, dealt with it. But mm. very often it's therapeutic for me to write back or say back even, you know, easier. I don't have to write anything. Mm. I'm just going to say it back. And then that's it. It's, you know, and then it's, it, I already feel it coming out of my system. It's coming, I mean, it's coming out. But it doesn't affect the other person. It doesn't affect the relationship. It doesn't cause harm. It What it does is it helps me vent the thing out of my uh, system. And, uh, you know, it's actually speeds it up to 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 deal with it because as I, as I said we are humans and we are emotional some more than others apparently um and uh you know we should embrace these limitations <laughs> that's interesting uh i I, know, I never thought of that like what, what you're saying <laughs> writing but back but never sending it i'm not like you you're saying you, f you find it helpful and I, I i believe you but i I do remain skeptical about it because um, what what I've found and and also read about many times is that this this popular this kind of um, pop culture advice of venting your anger is rarely useful. That instead of as it says venting your anger, you're 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 fueling it. You're adding fire to it by even entertaining the. The, the, the thoughts that make you angry and the way you'd respond to the person insulting you and making you angry, uh, quote unquote, as we discussed. Um, so I don't know about that, but definitely what, what makes sense is, yeah, uh, just like with many emotions, uh, the book dis discussed a lot of what you just said about grief, the emotion of, of, of grief. Yep. Uh, that it's inevitable that sometimes you will experience it. But the most important thing is for it not to cause you to do something stupid and respond to it immediately. So if you can't squash it, the anger, it's it makes sense to kind of distance yourself from whatever caused you to feel angry so that you can kind of calm down and not overreact in a way that would be destructive yeah as, as i mentioned before uh, in, in my case if i don't get things out of my system i very often like take them in and and and, and have them in so for me this kind of you know venting the anger actually makes it makes it, makes it weak because make a weaker because i just you know th it's like you know i get something in and i throw something out and it's not there anymore so for me it, it does help. But again, not sending it or not, you know, directing it to anyone. What it also helps is I don't do any more damage. I I, mm, I just yeah. get it out. And then, and also by, with process of writing something back like this, like the rational mi mind has more time to catch up. And then the rational mind starts analyzing mm. what I just wrote, what I just wrote. And it's like, Michael, seriously, you want to write this thing, you know, to this person back? 
Isn't that stupid? <laughs> so it's like the rational mind, you know, catches up with my emotions. For me, this this way, um, I don't keep it inside. I don't ling- I mean, I don't let it linger. I get it out, and my rational, uh, hopefully, my rational, you know, part catches up. Uh, that's really interesting. The the part you said about writing it down specifically, writing because, again, uh, what I found, what I've read about many times, is that the act of writing your thoughts is kind of neurologically dis- distinct from speaking out loud or mm-hmm. entertaining thoughts in your mind. And this is big reason why journaling works for me and is a very powerful tool for, uh, for thinking, for dealing with issues with life with whatever and this is something we discussed a little bit and we'll get back to the to journaling for sure but uh i i haven't considered that part that instead of you know if if you have to it definitely would be better to try to write something down instead of kind of um entertaining the thought of responding to someone in, that insulted you in your head uh or of course, or certainly not, you know, saying it it out, out loud to to that person, because writing it down makes it much easier to, as you said, to analyze it, to to see for yourself how meaningless it is. Yes, <laughs> and to notice the meaning that might be there, like in an insult, like the part that is yeah, might be useful feedback. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, we're running a bit long so uh, let's just uh, make a few kind of closing thoughts yeah we should and uh, one thing I also add is uh, just with all of the books we discuss this is our discussion this is our interpretation this is our our thoughts on the parts that we found most interesting or most useful to us but it's not the same as reading the book. So I I just, I, I feel like it's painful for me as we discuss this, how I understand uh, a lot of nuance in those concepts, but it's, it's difficult without lots of preparation time, which we don't have, to distill it and, and, um, and to talk about it. So I would, I found a guide to the good life very interesting and insightful and useful in my life and how I think about life. And I would recommend actually reading it uh, instead of just listening uh, to us. This is just, I guess, an intro to, to, to the actual book. Um, but uh, one thing we should we should discuss is there is one kind of most obvious... Um, criticism of stoicism which is that it takes effort to practice it it takes too much effort to practice it some of those things are are just ideas tricks uh you can use but but the big one um which is negative visualization like this is something to practice regularly to practice you know maybe a couple of time, times a week and it doesn't have to take a lot of time but it takes some time it takes some effort you have to it's something you have to keep on your mind to to practice negative visualization and to practice those other ideas of stoicism and catch yourself doing the wrong thing like responding to to an insult and correcting yourself it's hard it takes effort to practice it and of course in the modern world there's no time for it so why would you what why would we be interested in pursuing stoicism michael because everything meaningful requires effort <laughs> that's the basic thing i mean if uh it's like it's like this famous uh it's like this famous quote if you don't know where you're going every road will get you there so <laughs> right i mean because you really don't know where you're going so it's actually useful to know where you're going and to and it takes effort to plan where you're going or to try to plan the way to go and i think it's the same thing here it it requires effort to practice stoicism to uh to practice um these concepts as i mentioned for me if i can 
just be less in, like feel less insulted or get less angry because of these of, of practicing you know these tricks and these tricks and and you know being better um then i'm gonna be happier that, that it's as simple as that and if i i don't do this effort i'm gonna be unhappy so uh like you know so um it does make sense yeah and it's it's the same as so many things we discussed like if something is valuable of course it's going to take time but most of these things i see them as investments not cost right like it, sure it takes effort to practice stoicism but it can be argued and i will argue that um it takes effort not to practice stoicism it takes more effort not to practice stoicism because if you don't have this coherent philosophy of life right if you if you don't have this this framework those those tools to deal with what life throws at you you're just going to go in so many different directions pursuing things that don't matter uh you will uh, you know, you will spend time and effort and energy, um, you know, getting angry, responding to, to to insults and just dealing with it very badly and not feel good at all, like failing to attain uh, tranquility, right? And without this this um, philosophy of life, like you, you might so easily end up following the default, uh, the default option, which is um, kind of created by the society, uh, what people around us are are doing, and our evolutionary programming, like we just end up pursuing not tranquility, not this calm experience of joy in life, but pleasure, pleasure, which inevitably the pursuit of of pleasure, which the book um, explained in much better way than than I could, it just makes you end up feeling much worse most of the time trying to attain pleasure uh, you know being constantly in pursuit of money and fame and, and whatnot and and dealing with so much stress as a result of that dealing with with anger with all of those negative emotions with you feeling bad for not having what you want right so why like why would you consider um stoicism or or, or just the, the the stoical kind of psychological tricks as i would call them more effort to pursue than than the default like it's just the, the 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 default we don't consider the the cost of of this alternative because it, it's it's the, the default and and here you you invest time in a explicit way, but you're 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 gaining much more than what you put in. Totally, and um, th- what what I think like, you nailed in the head is the thing of having an arsenal of more tools to deal with life. And uh, for me, this is what this book was about, and stoicism is about. It's not like I'm gonna announce to the world now that I'm the biggest stoic ever or I'm a stoic at all. I just use some of the tools that stoics gave me to, to, to build my own, as you said, philosophy of, philosophy of life or the way of life. And, um, and I think, you know, in this world now that it's so busy and it's so uh, um, overwhelming very often with information, with, uh, with, with uh, propaganda, with, you know, cons- consumerism, uh, whatever you name it, um, any tool that helps us have a happy life and defined by our own happiness it is a good tool and we should we should have it and 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 for me uh, again uh, i don't think it you know the stoicism or the, the these tools uh, these tricks of stoicism if they, they don't they're not in a like in contra to to any other way of life like for example like being for me being faithful christian uh, it doesn't mean i'm just have to just right now dump my religion and just be stoic or something like that no i think that the, these uh, um uh tools this these the, these tricks of stoicism this 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 mindset uh actually helps me better helps me to be better christian or better uh person of faith um because 
as, as we discussed, n none of us is the same. We are different people and we re react differently. We react differently to insults, which we just uh, today uh, discussed. We react differently to the world. Uh, so, you know, anything that helps us be better is good. Yeah, I, I think the, the problem with discussing Stoicism is that it sounds too serious. Maybe that, that that's not yeah. a good word either, but it's just like this whole thing, this serious, old, important thing, um, which which makes you f think that to pursue it is incompatible with anything else in life. And it is certainly incompatible with, with some things. I, I, I wouldn't say that it's compatible with, with everything. Like mm -hmm. it, it stands in opposition to... Yeah. To, to to hedonism, right? But but the, the the big point here, the the last question, which I guess should have been the first question to answer, is well, why do you need a philosophy of life? Well, because you only have one shot at life, and without a good philosophy of life, or again in modern terms, that makes it sound less repulsive, a coherent strategy to life. You risk misliving, and you you can't bring that back so that's stoicism <laughs> so don't listen to 50 cent get millions or die trying <laughs> <laughs> no definitely do not get millions or, or die trying exactly okay so um uh, now that we've got this book covered uh, we said to our listeners that we would be mentioning the books we're reading right now or have our list right mm -hmm. so let's try to finish off every episode if possible, and to mention something that we've been listening recent, recently to, or that we are going to listen to, mm -hmm. and and some of these books were we are or we might be discussing in the future on the show, um, or perhaps not. Perhaps it's it's not it's not something we discuss, but just something we found interesting and worth reading. And since we discuss a lot of books on on the show, it 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 makes sense to recommend the ones that we found interesting. Okay, so I would mention the. Nonviolent Communication uh, by Marshall Rosenberg. It's not a brilliant book, but I I really liked it. Uh, it helps um, it it helps me you know understand the feelings and and the and how to communicate the feelings because this is something where we very often get confused. What what do you mean? I feel this or or what are really your feelings? So yeah, I recommend reading it i it's you know it's it helped me all right and uh, my recommendation for this week would be the book skunk works a personal memoir of my years at uh, at lockheed by ben rich um it's what it says on 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 the tin it's it's the history of the skunk works uh which was this um secretive part of lockheed martin uh making you know crazy advanced secret spy planes for the US government and first of all it's just an interesting uh, history even if you're not that interested in um, in US history or in you know advanced engineering projects but uh, what made it more interesting uh, to me is how it relates to a simpler way of working that has a lot to do with what we discuss on the show how we try to work at Nosby in a way that's simpler, easier, that has less overhead, that's very different from the, the normal way of uh, organizing companies. And even though this was a big project in a, in a big uh, company making projects for the government, they, they did things differently. And, and in you know, many, many decades ago, uh, which makes it really, really interesting. That was a, a, an unusual operation. Okay, that's it for this week. All right. See you next week. See you next week.